Happy Saturday morning. I'm Ashley Moore and welcome into the prep rally. It's week four of the high school football season and the final week before league play, meaning it's about to get real real in the hunt for the playoffs. But for our last week of pre league play, our game of the week was Erie versus Broomfield. And before the game is the prep rally. Yeah, it's a big game every year, and it's always a great game, too. I think that this year the boys have a really strong team, and it's definitely going to be a really great game. If you think Broomfield's going to win tonight, make some noise. <laughs> and if you think Erie's going to win, make some noise. One thing you can trust is that Erie will bring their A game to this game. Talk to me about what you've seen from the tape and what y'all have been preparing for this week. Yeah, Erie is a phenomenal football program, not just this year, but forever, right? Uh, they can beat you in a multitude of ways. They've got a great screen game, a great run game, a phenomenal defense, a really good pass game. They do it all, um, and they are really, really well coached. Um, so we've got to be on our A game and play to the best of our ability to play with these guys. Okay, so when we talk about energy, one of the most high energy places is the dugout on the softball field. Okay, so ladies, let's bring the energy. I want y'all to teach me a dugout here, real quick. Okay. <laughs> All right, what we got? You missed the catcher's bit. Butter, butter, hey. You missed all of it. Butter, butter, hey. You missed the catcher's bit. Butter, butter, hey. You missed all of it. Butter, butter, hey. But to the game, it's a rivalry these kids live for. Broomfield versus, versus Erie in a rematch of the 2022 state semifinals. And it could be one of the last times we see this matchup as Erie has moved up to 5A. But let's get into these highlights. Friday Night Lights game of the week. Let's do something, baby. First quarter, Erie's Ronan Ward gets it out to Donovan O'Brien, who shakes off one defender, but not Brendan Fritch, who pokes it out, and Broomfield's Elliott Les comes up with the fumble. Eagles ball. But that would lead to a mock Maxwell marchy field goal to put the Eagles up 3-zip. All right, so less than three minutes to go in the quarter now. Erie ball when Ward airs it out downfield, but to the wrong man. Mason Smiley comes up with the INT. Broomfield ball again. But Erie would get on the board with a field goal in the second quarter, leading 6-3 in the first half. All right, so to the first drive of the second half. Erie going for it on fourth and long. Ward back to pass and finds Gabe Simmer wide open on the sideline for the first touchdown of the night. Erie takes a 13-3 lead. Very next drive, Eagles need offense. Darian Jackson flush out of the pocket and lets it fly downfield to Gio Toledo. What a snag, but the Eagles still couldn't convert. So to the fourth we go. Broomfield with a last-ditch effort, but Erie's Dylan Fireball calls game as Erie stuns Broomfield for the second year in a row. Here's QB Ronan Ward on the only touchdown of the game coming on fourth and long. On the fourth and long, this man right here. They uh, So we were in like an attached look. We ran a post wheel. Both of their safeties went with the post, and so I just looked and I was like, he's wide open. So I just I threw it to him. We scored. We won the game, so. Oh, it felt, ama felt amazing, especially with, with Blake gone and all the talk about you can't do it without Blake. It's all Blake. Just proving them wrong, proving that we got depth, we got the guys, we got the talent. We, we work hard, we, and that we got it in on. Great defensive game, too. Over at Echo Park was a big rivalry as the Ponderosa Mustangs took on the Chaparral Wolverines. End of the first half, Pondo QB Coulter Espinosa surveying the field before finding Cole Barnes, who gets up there inside the 10. Ensuing play, and it's Espinosa again, finding Barnes again, who makes the diving catch under his defender. But to the very first play of the second half, Espinosa looking, but runs out of time when Brett Haley and Dominic Corday come up with the strip sack as Jackson Mosier scoops it up and scores it in for the Wolverines first touchdown of the night. Very next kickoff and it's short gets a good bounce when Max Mervin comes up with it and watch him go bobbing and weaving through defenders like Floyd Mayweather in the ring and right into open field before finally bring ball down inside the 30. And when you make a play like that, you get a chance to make another one. Mervin in the flat and it's fundamentals and finesse dropping bodies on his way in for a 30 yard score. All right, so Chaparral, what you got? Stedman back to pass 
and Riker Thompson deflects it and comes down with the INT. What a play from the senior, which would then lead to an Ethan Peckerick running tutty as Ponderosa just obliterates Chaparral. Well, over to flag football now as the Arvetta West Wildcats took on Columbine for the Jeffco League title. A West ball, Sailor Swanson in at QB, but oh, what a catch from Sarah Walker, mossing two girls in the process, 13 zip. And then right before halftime, it's Swanson again. But this time, watch this out route from her receiver, Molly Shellpepper, who she rewards with a tutty of her own. That's Swanson's third touchdown pass on the night as A-West makes Columbine go night-night en route to the Jeff Co. League title. We'll see them in the playoffs. Over on the softball field, it's your legend Titans taking on the Rock Canyon Jaguars. And this one, well, it was all legend. Lucy Thompson starting us off with a bang-bang solo homer out the gate for the junior as her team then awaits her back at the plate for the celebration. Very next batter, C.J. Morgan says, I want one too. And ding-dong, one of her two homers and back-to-back -back dingers for the Titans. But I want to see some defense. Rock Canyon at bat. And it's a pop fly to left, but watch Lucy Thompson lay her body on the line for the out. Great two-way game for Thompson as Legend takes down the Jaguars 13-3. Moving over to the volleyball court. The Mead Mavericks playing host to the Holy Family Tigers. With Gabby Herbert back to pass for the opening serve. And it's dug up and set outside to Lean Pateka, who gets it past the blockers and in for the Mavericks point. But watch Holy Family go opposite side to Charlotte Fisher, and she would not be denied. Tigers feeling it now, but then it'll be Carolyn Staff this time setting it to the middle, and Hayden Smith does the rest, just out of reach. But Meade controlled this game from start to finish. Set outside the Haley Hall, my goodness, throws it down. And guess who again? Hall, as Meade takes down Holy Family in straight sets. And lastly, to a video sent from a viewer, watch closely. Jefferson Academy taking on Colorado Academy. And oh, sophomore Mason Spicer goes the distance on the free kick. And then again, from half the distance, ending the night with a hat trick and a 4-1 Jaguars win. Congrats, fellas.